Hello, and welcome to our Kubernetes security webinar sponsored by Tigera. My name is John Armstrong. I am the head of product marketing at Tigera. And today's topic of discussion is about detecting lateral movement and defending against attackers. As Kubernetes matures, gone are the days when we can fully compromise a cluster by just taking over a pod and sending commands to the Kubernetes API service. RBAC and other Kubernetes security features force attackers to pivot at least once to find the right vulnerable pod or service account with the right privileges to take over a cluster. The attack surface grows as the cluster gets bigger and more third-party applications are deployed. By understanding the attacker's workflow and gaining visibility into the relevant connections, we're able to identify our cluster's weak points and limit the attacker's reach. It's my pleasure to introduce Garwood Pang, who is leading today's session. Garwood is a security researcher uh, with Tigera. Garwood's cybersecurity experience includes three years at GE Digital, as well as, uh, as a vulnerability researcher for industrial control systems, as well as three years at Fortinet, writing signatures for intrusion detection, intrusion prevention systems. Garwood's presentation will be followed by a Q&A session. And you can submit your questions to us online at any time during the webinar using the Bright Talk questions interface on your screen. And we will address all of the questions at the end of the presentation. And now I'll pass things over to Garwood. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, welcome to my uh, webinar. Uh, so. For today's agenda, uh, we are going to examine some common techniques that uh, attacker will use to gain intel of your cluster, and we will discuss the ways that we can um, limit what they do. Uh, I will show a demo of an attacker escalating their privilege uh, using a vulnerable Kubernetes uh, custom resource definition API call. And lastly, I'll show some fish. I'll visualize some reconnaissance technique uh, using Calico Enterprise. So um, let's first talk in the uh, talk about the uh, reconnaissance techniques. So we're talking about when the uh, the attacker has already compromised a pod. Uh, this might be using some sort of like uh, vulnerabilities that they found on the attacker at uh, the user's website and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to assume that they now have uh, shell access in the pod. So in the attacker's view, they know that they're in some sort of node or in some sort of pod. Um, they, don't, they know that there's probably going to be more nodes that the cluster has, and it probably knows that there's some sort of master, but it does not know where it is or how to reach those. So the, the most common areas that the attacker would use to look for more information about the cluster uh, is via the cluster provider's API metadata surface. Um, next is the uh, pod networking and file system. So this is talking about like the uh, image that's actually running the pod. And lastly, the Kubernetes API service. So what are, what's the cloud provider metadata service? Um, that's what what you, uh, that's used by the DevOps or SREs uh, in your company that use, use using this service to manage their um, your cloud. So let's say you're on GCP or AWS. Uh, these are all reachable by the specific IP address like 169.254.169.254 or the metadata google.internal. Uh, accessing this uh, endpoint will then go to the cloud provider's API, uh, the cloud provider's metadata service. Uh, from that, it will provide you with like host name, IP, IAM role credentials, and other useful data, so that you can help step off the page. So, in our view, what does that mean, right? Um, you can see that there is your host name, which is uh, less, which gives you a good amount of information because a lot of times. Uh, users or DevOps would like to have their like owner's name, um, what the node is, or how many node it, uh, which node it is on. Uh, it also tell you like the project name. So these are all good information for the attacker to then use to deduce what's in the uh, project or the cluster. 
Uh, next, you will get to see the network. Um, you're getting, you can get the external IP and internal IP of the node that you're in, as well as the DNS server. So this will all be useful later on when you want to kind of probe the other, uh, the other nodes that in the system. Uh, there are times where the DevOps or SRE would add some some attributes. Uh, this is just so that they have like maybe some such a configuration they want, and the attacker will see those and use it to their advantage. Uh, lastly, is the IAM role credentials. Um, this is what this is like basically a service account that was used to create the uh, instance or node. And sometimes, if you want to have if you will need to provide your node, uh, like let's say S3 access or bucket access, uh, then you want to have like a special, you want to add like a role so they can read those. Uh, but in also in this case, uh, if the attacker was able to reach uh, the metadata service, they're able to then also look at all your S3 buckets because it also has the credentials. So now that we have these kind of information for, or the attacker has this information, they can now like update their uh, Nodes. Uh, now they know that in the compromised pods node, uh, they know like the host name that we talked about. Uh, it now has like a rough sense of what the other nodes are. Uh, it knows the, it is in the same subnet and same BPC and will have the same project name. Uh, that's going to be the same for the master node also. So, how do we defend against this? Uh, you just need to review your service account's permissions. Uh, when that was used to create the instance. And you also want to have a network policy to block access to this um, special IP address on your pods. There's really currently like no reasons why you need it in your pods. So you can just block it or monitor it. Uh, there's, like a, uh, there's like a Google link that you can look into or you can just Google it. Uh, I will show you a quick picture of like what it looks like, right? Um, so you need to go to your GCP uh, VM instance page, and you want to look for the service account. Sorry, yeah, the service account name. Uh, we'll find it your IAM uh, page, and then just need to look at the permissions and remove anything that you don't need. Uh, with that, the attacker would then not be able to use the IAM role credentials to do more reconnaissance. But now you also want to have a never policy to um, block it from being reached. So what we do in Calico Enterprise or Calico is to create a global network set. Uh, we want to label the IP address 169.254.169.254 uh, as a color red, and then we want to create a global network policy uh, that will then block, we'll set it to block egress to that colors or the label. So next, uh, we uh, the attacker will want to look at the pod networking and file system. So here, what the attacker is trying to do is trying to get as much uh, such as possible in that pod. Uh, the more, the better in, in their view, and try to find all the interesting secrets or data that they can retrieve in that pod. And once they're done, they would then start looking around nearby uh, pods or any other targets that they can reach and then they're gonna do it over again when they get in. And until, this gonna happen until they find what they need or they found enough that they can then uh, either uh, escalate into accessing the node or just having like admin access to the cluster. Uh, so what they do is they go from the bottom of this list up. Uh, they first wanna look around for the networking and see what's nearby. Uh, they want to then go to look at the file system and see what the permissions are and what they can read. Uh, ideally, they want it to be uh, have a have a root um, user in this node. I'm sorry, in this pod. Uh, if that if they have the root, then they can always just edit the profile permissions, right? Um, next, they want to look to see if there's any like special capabilities that's granted. So we're talking about like the host network, host IPC, or host PID. Uh, these will give them information on how to. Um, I'll give information of what the node's running also. And lastly, if they have, if they can, they want it. They want the pod to be the privilege pod, because that essentially gives you like a root access, and it's very trivial to then escape into the node that was running the compromised pod. 
So what are they looking for, right? Uh, they're looking for secret data such as like uh, secrets, host mounts files, certificates and sockets. Uh, what these are is basically secrets that maybe the DevOps or the application has some sort of passwords, uh, host mount files so you can see all the configurations. Um, certificates like root CAs, you can then steal then generate your own certificates to impersonate the application or sockets, so like Docker sockets where you can then start talking directly into the Docker sockets and maybe like create new images or steal images. The attacker will then also want to look at the IP address or any surface names that you can they can find so then they can then reach the other um, surfaces and find the next targets. So we're gonna go over some commands. Um, these are all like very, very basic Linux commands that everyone should already know. But in the sense of Kubernetes, uh, they will actually give you a more, more information than you expect. So first we're gonna look at the env, which is the environment variables um, command. Um, you can do it two ways, env or cat proc, uh, a PID and then your en environment file. Um, this is interesting because then now you can see here, uh, Kubernetes will always add like whatever stuff that you're not at, you're gonna add stuff that is specific to Kubernetes. So for example, the host name, and it will always have the Kubernetes um, API IP address. Um, being able to reach it may be a different story if they have network policies, but it does tell you where it is. So you can maybe try to probe into that. Um, any other services that's running on the same namespace will also be here. Uh, as I said, it also depends on if there's network policy that's blocking it. Um, but this is something that the attacker would then write down and maybe target later. So next is cap message. Um, that's showing you all the capabilities of the pod. Um, if you look at it on the top and the bottom, uh, the bottom one is the privilege. Uh, you can see that you get a lot more privilege or sorry, capabilities um, when you have privilege true. The main one is like cap sys, cap sys admin. Uh, that really gives you like root access. Um, and this is, we're talking about like the real root access, not just like a fake root access. Uh, so this makes it very trivial for you to then uh, jump to the node, which is running your compromised pod. So next is PSAUX, very simple or uh, as prop. Um, this tells you what's running on, currently running on your pod, but if you have the host PID granted on this uh, pod for some reason, then you actually see all your running pods or other running processes in the node. So then you can, if you have more privilege or capabilities, you can always just, what you can do is you can uh, attach yourself into one of these other pods or inject stuff into other pods and then you can get access that way. So mount, uh, mount is actually pretty interesting in um, the Kubernetes cluster. Um, what happens is that you would actually see, uh, as my arrow show, um, other stuff that was mounted by Kubernetes. So anything that you did, like for example, config maps or secrets or um, any volume mounts or host mounts, uh, you actually see it here. So, and this makes it so it's a lot easier for you, or for the attacker to then just use mount and see what's specially mounted and then go and look at those instead of having them maybe like going per directory to look for anything interesting. And this already tell them what they need to look at and if they can reach it. Uh, next is the cat uh, EDC resolve. Um, that's very simple. It's just telling you where um, the DNS server is. Uh, with the DNS server, or oh, knowing where it is, the attacker then can then start probing and do a lookups to figure out or figure out the service names. And if they can get an IP address or service IP address from that, they can figure out where to go next or what are the other circuits. So next is the bar one. Uh, this is where usually all the sockets or um, Kubernetes secret, uh, surface account secrets are located. Um, as I said before, if you, for some reason, have a Docker socket in your uh, compromised pod, then they can talk to the Docker 
engine where then they can pull all the images out or spin up more images. Uh, that's going to be really bad for you. Um, the attacker will also want to look at the um, surface account secret. That's going to be useful when we want to target the Kubernetes API. So next is IP address. Um, that's very also very simple, but it does tell you what your pods, the compromised pods IP address is. Uh, with that, then they can then bring around. Um, if, for example, if for some reason the host network was granted to this compromised pod, they would then be able to see all the interfaces that is on the node. And with that, they can then start um, directly interact with these interfaces and probe the network. So with that, what do they have, right? Um, they have, the attacker now has the IP address of, sorry, the pod IP address and the subnet that's in. Uh, it will also have the host name of what the compromised pod is to know what the pod about. Um, the attacker then also now knows what the applicate what are the applications that's running on this compromised pod and if there's any other vulnerable application that they can then use also. Uh, this give us or this data occur um it knows know what the capabilities that this pod has and if there's anything or not, they can then always pivot. And lastly all the secrets that is on the container is now probably being read by the attacker so that now they have that too. So with that, we can update our uh, notes or our picture of what they have, right? Uh, now that they look at their compromise pods, they have now the stuff that I just talked about. And now they may want to look at what's all what's their write. So the main stuff that they are trying to access or trying to get is the surface names. Uh, this is basically what happens is you have your DNS. so when you create a new service, uh, it would, a new DNS entry is created, so then you can access it with that uh, domain name instead of having the service IP address. Uh, a lot of times what this is is the service name dot service names namespace. So it might be not hard for you to uh, guess and probe and maybe try to figure out what it is. And if they get it right, they will get the service IP. Uh, with the surface IP, then they can access the um, the exposed uh, application that was intended to expose, and then they can start probing around that way. And uh, they want to try to grab all IP address or find what the uh, what the is running. In. Just wanted to let our live audience know that uh, we're having a little problem with uh, Garwood's phone connection. Uh, all these uh, events are, are managed uh, remotely and run remotely. So uh, Garwood's going to be back on the line shortly. Uh, I think he's probably going to dial in again and see if he can get a better connection um, for the webinar presentation. So please hold, uh, please hold on for us, and uh, we'll just pause for a moment. Thank you. Um, hi, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? 
can hear you fine, Garwood. You sound great. Is this Thank better? you. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I guess I'll continue on then. So I'll, re -talk, I'll talk about the slide again then. So in the enumeration, uh, we're just going to use the nmap-fn on the pod IP address or the pod subnet. Uh, what this does is then it gives you, um, if you do it on, if you run this command on the uh, pod IP address or pod subnet, uh, what this does is then it would send all the, you will do a ping scan on the whole subnet of the node. And with that, you will know all the other pods that is running on the same node of the compromised pod. Uh, while this is happening, you also get the DNS lookup. Uh, and what that will give you is the surface names, as you can see on the right. Um, if you do it on the surface IP address, uh, it will also take a long time. And it will take a long time, but you will also get your surface names that way too. Um, the issue for you running AdMap is that since you're actually paying a lot of uh, different endpoints, uh, you will generate a lot of noise. And what you can do is you can just use the network policy to stop this from happening. Uh, next is the port scan. It's very similar to uh, enumeration. Uh, you just do nmap dash uh, capital P N and then the IP address. Uh, I will recommend you to actually run it on the IP address and not the subnet because it will take a long time. So what this does is it will tell you, it will find out of exposed ports and services that's running on the pod or the surface. And with that, you can then start probing into it. Um, so there's an interesting about uh, interesting thing about this is that even if you have a pod that is running, um, let's say Apache for example, if the uh, user did not like expose, do it like a surface, uh, create a surface for this um, application, uh, you can actually still reach it using the pod IP address, even though there's no surface IP address because you didn't create a surface. Um, so you can also see right. Uh, what that also means is that if you have a surface and you have a pod IP address. You can actually reach the same service uh, using the pod IP and the service IP. Um, same thing, uh, you will generate a lot of noise because if you're doing a port scan. And lastly, never policy will always be able to block this. So with that in mind, uh, now the picture of what the, uh, the attacker can see is quite a bit now. Um, the attacker now knows what a nearby pod and what kind of service they're running on for the target. And for the for pods that is running on the same node, you'll even get like the pod IP address and more other stuff they're running. So how do we de defend against this, right? Um, so what you want to do is have a minimal base image. Uh, this reduce the amount of uh, binaries or applications that the attacker can use. So we're talking about like the IP the IP address or mount and stuff like that. If you use a minimal image, then it will require the attacker to uh, basically either download the image or somehow get these tools that they want or utility tools that they want. Um, they have to then have to get it from the from another source. And then we, what we want to do is then we want to set the whole image to be uh, read only. Uh, with that, then the attacker can even create files, so then they can even bring in the images. Uh, sorry, to bring in their binaries or applications. Uh, we also want to have to want to set the users for the pods to be non root. Uh, what what this does is then it prevent the attacker from being able to reset and be able to change the file permissions of the image. So then they can change it from read only to read write. Uh, next, we also want to drop and remove the shell of the image. There's really no point nowadays that you need a shell to run your um, applications. Uh, what you can do now is have the Kubernetes run your application directly, so you don't need shell. And this makes it harder for the attacker to uh, then somehow inject a shell so then they have shell access. Uh, we also want to drop the capabilities of your pods if you don't need them uh, using the pod security policy. And lastly, you just want to block the egress or the internet access using network policy if for some reason you don't need um, internet. 
So the last thing we will talk about is the Kubernetes resources or the Kubernetes API. Um, this can be done internally and externally, depending on how the cluster was set up. And since you do have like your, we will figure out the external IP address and stuff like that, maybe for some reason, the DevOps person exposed the Kubernetes API, this allows the attacker to then probe it from the outside. Um, what the attacker can get is purely based on what service account was uh, apply to the compromised pod. So if there is no, sorry. So if there is nothing, then the attacker won't be able to do anything. So a, if the attacker was able to compromise a pod that has access to the custom APIs or CRDs, um, they are able to do a lot of stuff because CRDs requires you to have Kubernetes permissions. So then we know there's some sort of rules that will apply to this service account or the pod. So then they can look around that way. So what the attacker needs when they have the compromised pod is to make sure that they can access the Kubernetes API and they were able to find this using the environment variable. Uh, they want to see that there is a service account token that's mounted on the uh, pod at bar one secret Kubernetes uh, service account. And ideally, if they have internet access, they will just download Kubernetes, sorry, kubectl, or if not, they can always just manually curl. And as I said before, if for some reason the DevOps person will expose the Kubernetes API, uh, they can then just grab the service account token uh, back to the laptop and then uh, Curry or use kubectl on their end to then reach the exposed um, external Kubernetes API servers. Um, special cases happen when you are in like a managed Kubernetes cluster, so like GKE and EKS. Uh, since it is um, Google or AWS that's managing the management plane, uh, there is an IP address. So if for some reason the DevOps person have not used like a proper PPC and stuff to kind of like hide it. And this will allow the attacker to then reach it. So the main command to use is uh, kubectl of can I list. This will give you all the permissions of what the service account has. Um, you can also check it for namespace because a lot of times what you can, what people usually like to do is uh, have specific permissions or roles per namespace. So on the picture, you can see that on the left is basically a default uh, permissions where there's nothing on the service account. And on the right, you can see the wildcard, the wildcard star dot star with the verb star. And this is basically telling you that you can do anything you want on the cluster. And you don't really don't want that to happen. So how to defend against this, um, you can actually unmount the service account token if you don't need it. Uh, if you also don't set a specific service account, it will now be a default service account with no permissions. Um, if you do need these permissions, then you have to uh, review your cluster rows or rows to make sure that they're namespace specific and that they're in, there's nothing that's um, need, not, not needed, but you added into it. Uh, we can always add never policies to block uh, external internal requests to the Kubernetes API service. So with that, uh, we have now basically completed, or the attacker has now completed their picture of, or have a good idea of what is running on the cluster. Um, now they can also now know if they can access the Kubernetes API or not. Uh, with that, the attacker could then look at the different services or pods and find the next target if they need to. So I'll now go over a demo of what I just kind of talked about. So this, in this demo, um, I'm using a uh, Kubernetes cluster on GCP. Uh, it was installed in KubeADM. Uh, I'll start off within a Kubernetes pod. Uh, what that is, is just, I'm just uh, doing to cut out extract into a pod. Uh, I'll look around and see if I can find any interesting information. Uh, I will then find a vulnerable custom resource definition and we're gonna do this token. And then we're gonna pivot and impersonate that CRD. So what is a CRD, right? Um, it's one of the ways you can add custom functionalities to 
the Kubernetes cluster. And this is what you see when you see like your manifest uh, with like the word kind, like kind global network policies or kind pods or deployment. What happens is then you can create these manifests and send it to Kubernetes API. And then what happens on the back end is that you'll have a controller that's running and it's gonna monitor the specific object that you're creating. And once they see that you have a new, you have submitted a new manifest, uh, it will then do whatever it needs to do to spin up a new pod or deployment and stuff like that. So this is how all these third party applications are used um, and how are they implemented, right? So I'm gonna move over to my screen share. And I'll start showing how it works. So here's a pod that I have uh, accepted into. This is our initial access pod. Uh, we are running on a route. So we're going to look around and see what we have in your in our system. Uh, so I'm just doing like the basic LS to see what what are the files or files yeah what are the files that's running on us on the pod. Uh, we're going to do the EMV file as I said before. And we can figure out, we can see that there is a microservice front end that the attacker will then write down and maybe probe later. Um, you also have the Kubernetes, AP, sorry, the Kubernetes API service uh, IP address. So then now we can, we may be able to talk to the Kubernetes API. And we also have the host name, but at the moment, this, this is like a initial access pod, there's nothing interesting for that. Uh, we also want to do, for example, PSAUX. And we can see that uh, PSA use will not actually was not installed in this um, pod. So what we can just do is just go uh, as pod. And we can see that there's only here on the left corner, there's only four different um, PIDs. This tell me that this tell me that we don't have the host PID uh, capabilities granted. So it's just stuff that is running locally. Uh, next we want to do IP address. Uh, with that, you can then grab the IP address. Uh, what we can then do is download nmap and then start doing the enumeration and put scan to figure out what other pod is running or service is running. Uh, we also want to run mount, and we can see here there isn't much anything interesting other than the four um, special files that Kubernetes has mounted. So your host name, your resource comp for the DNS, and we can also see that um, the Kubernetes also mounted a Surface account, so we will want to look to see what the Surface account is about. Uh, before we go there, we can always just see if we have curl and if we can look outside. Uh, what I did was I curl google.com. Uh, we see a lot of data that's coming in, so we can safely say that we have um, internet access or egress access. So with that, what we want to do is then um, look at the Surface account. So far one, secret, Kubernetes. And you can see that there's a token. So we're gonna use this token to then talk to the Kubernetes API if we can, right? So since we have um, egress access, I have a, you just have a script or a command that you can use to Download to cuddle. So I'm just going to do that now. So we want to change the permission to that to something else so that we can run it. And we're going to check out pods, right? Um, so what this, so when you're in a pod and you have to cuddle, um, to cuddle will actually figure out that there is a, uh, a service account. Oh, sorry. Yeah, service account in the far run. So then you don't actually need to like, does it explicitly uh, tell you where to find the credentials? It will actually automatically find it for you. Actually, this also works with the IP address too. So that's why I can just do keep cut out that pods. Uh, we can see that uh, the user of this user does not have permissions to list pods. Uh, but what that also means is we can always try the off can I list. And with that, we can see that there is a bunch of um, use this at the moment um, permissions. Um, we can see it here, but a lot of times what these four 
you're actually not able to access it uh, because you don't have the proper tier. Um, but we do see this bad speak dot badass dot vulnerable dot com. Uh, so that's probably the target that we want to look at. So we want to try to see what it, what it has. So we're going to do to cut all get bad feet. Uh, we see that there's nothing. Uh, we also also means that we have access to it, right? So I'm going to do dash A to see all the namespaces. And we can see that in the default namespace, there's actually a bad feet sample that's running. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, let me run it with OEM also because it was inside. Um, we can see that there is some sort of spec here for this bad beat kind. Um, it's, some, it's using some sort of token and there's an URL. So what this looks like is maybe this surface, what this application CRD does is, is monitoring this um, IP address or the microservice and it's using a header so using a token as a header for some sort of authorization. So for us, right, um, we can try, sorry, we can try to see if we have access to secrets, which I highly doubt. Um, so we can't really figure out, like we can't go and get microservice um, token. So we can't really access the token, um, but there's a good chance that we can edit this um, that beat. So let's try that, right? And since I look at the moment, it looks like I actually have permissions to edit the uh, bad speed. And what we want to do now is kind of like modify what we have here so that we can maybe steal that Microsoft token. Um, so what I'm going to use is something called Angrook. And what this is, um, is a application that would then, if I run the command, so angle HTTP and then a location, uh, what this does is it's going to expose my laptop, uh, the, the file that I just showed you, or the directory I showed you to this angle website. So if I access this uh, angle website on anywhere, it will then redirect to my laptop. And we kind of basically made like a makeshift web server. So what we want to do is then since we know that the uh, token is part of the header that this app is going to send, we're going to replace that URL with this um, Angle website and see if we can steal the token that way. So I'm going to edit the uh, URL to the Angle so N D E D. So Angle uh, I O. So if if I save and if this works. Um, we can also see on the left first, we can see that it was edited. So we know we had edit permissions. And on the right, we instantly see a get request, right? So now we go to our Angro uh, web interface and we just see what we can, we just now see what's happening. So it's 4040 and you can see that it was, it's a reply to it. It was just test us, test out the file that I created. Um, but we look at the headers, right? We can see that actually the token um, header that we were talking about. And we can see that this is the token that they were using as authorization. Um, I'm going to copy it because there's a good chance that this might be also a Kubernetes type of account token. Uh, what I usually see is the uh, EY at the start. That usually indicates to me at least that is a uh, Kubernetes type of account token. So with that, now that we have this token, we're going to try to run our cube cuddle with this row and set and see what we have, right? So we want to do cube cuddle back in our, um, our pod. We just had a set token, and then we just want to paste the token, and then we want to try to get pods again. And here we can see that we actually now have the two new, oh, sorry, not two new, but like the, the stuff that's running on the certain namespace. So it was the initial access that we had and the microservice that was running. Uh, what this tells us is that this credential that we just saw has way more capabilities than the one that we had. Uh, we can always just confirm this by doing off can I list. And you can see, right, there's a, a lot more um, permissions that are granted. Uh, Looks like mostly it's related to calicles. So 
style to tell us that we can then start probing into quality network policy that was set, maybe turn it off and stuff like that. And we also have the part and namespace access. So with that, now that attacker was able to compromise um, a part, they were able to look at the CRDs and find a vulnerable API that they can use. And then they were able to steal the token of the, um, the CRD. So what I'm talking about the token was the token of um, the controller that was running, uh, running the CRD. So that's, so the token that we stole was actually a token that's being used by the bad feed um, controller. So then now we're able to do that and now we're basically impersonate of that. So back to our picture, or we're gonna now show what it looks like in the Calico Enterprise site. Um, we have, so in Calico Enterprise, we have a Kibana dashboard that shows all the flows. So here I'm gonna show you the other page on this one. And I have already set it I can always reset it. So we want to set the source name to be the initial access part, right? So now we're on the, oops, let me close this. So now we can see uh, the other stuff that the attacker was doing, right? So we were in the initial access uh, part, uh, it talked to the DNS server uh, it talks remotely to curl Google and download the Kipedo. Um It also talks to the Kubernetes API service, which is the ksd.kubernetes. Um, it was also talking to the microservice previously. So we have we now know what they were trying to access. Um, I should have also tried to access the metadata service. And we can also see that we actually had access to the uh, cloud metadata service. Um, with that, we can also show you the other side. Um, we're going to look at a DNS log, so we can see. Yep. So with the DNS log, we can actually see the um, <clears throat> the DNS request to Angle. Uh, I there's a good chance that we're a bit we. Um, this is not updated yet, so we might have to wait a little bit. Yeah, it just takes a little bit of time for it to consolidate all the data and then upload it to Kibana. So we'll just leave it at that. Uh, I'll go back to our slides and finish it up. Oh, sorry, before that, we can also look at the alerts that we have. So we do already have some, um, Alerts call lateral movements. So this is what I'm using to generate alert whenever a pod in that namespace talks to the Kubernetes API. This will then generate alert. Um, there's alerts for the cloud metadata API that we access. So let's go back to the slides. So this is what I was talking about for the detect and visualization. Uh, so how do we detect about lateral movements, right? Um, well, unless they have like a container escape, this is all going to be done by the network. And since we have uh, flow logs, uh, we are able to look at all the attackers, what they're doing, all their probes and lateral movements. And as I kind of showed you, um, you are able to use something called a global alert to create alerts based on the log. So we can use a global network set as I, oh, I showed you, um, it's what it looks like when the attacker is probing the uh, cloud provider metadata service. Um, next, we can also see the cloud and network file system, right? We will sh I also will show you uh, the attacker reaching the Kubernetes API, DNS, and other stuff that they were talking. With that, you can then either create network policies to block it or just create global alerts to trigger an alert. Uh, I wasn't able to show you the uh, DNS request because maybe later, uh, but you should be able to see the DNS request to Angrok and then you can figure out the IP address that the attacker was trying to reach. Um, so we also have the global alerts. Uh, this is 
you can then generate different alerts for stuff that you want, all the different flows that you're interested in, and that's basically it. I'll do a quick look here to see if I gain anything on my DNS log yet. Nope, not yet. Oh, that's basically it for my presentation. I'll happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Garwin, uh, for an excellent presentation and, and demo. Uh, and that was on detecting lateral movement and defending against attackers. And uh, as you noted, it's time for our Q&A session. And uh, we see a couple of questions coming up from the audience. We'll just give you another minute uh, or so to do that. Um, before we do the Q&A, um, I'd just like to remind everyone that every week Tigera is presenting live webinars and uh, live training events uh, to help you expand your Kubernetes networking and security knowledge, and you're invited to attend all of these. And please, please visit our website at www.tigera.io for more information and a schedule of events. Um, so now we're going to go back to... Garwood here in the Q&A. And Garwood, I have, I have some questions here for you. So the first question is, can you please explain some more about global alerts? Yeah, sure. So what this feature does is you can basically label or specify the, flow, the interesting flows that you want. So in my case, it was the cloud uh, metadata API address uh, or the accessing the Kube API and stuff like that. Um, then what happens is then when we, or when the controller sees these flows coming in, uh, it will generate an alert and you will see it on the alerts page of the Calico Enterprise. Um, we actually have a pretty good, really good blog about this uh, on our blog, sorry, on our blog web page. Um, it's called five. Let me double check. Like five, five ways to quickly uncover malicious activity and protect your Kubernetes workloads. And you can just take a look at that. All right. Thank you, uh, Garwin. Uh, next question is: um, Is there a way to block an attacker from using uh, Kubectl off? Can I list command? Yep. Uh, so for that, it's basically uh, you uh, to for that command to work, it needs the self subject um, self review something like that. I forgot the full name. Let me double check. Uh, it's the self subject uh, access reviews. So you just what you want to do is you want to basically uh, disable that uh, role or access to that, and then they won't be able to use that. Um, of can I list, then the attacker will then have to manually uh, try to like, get pod, get service one by one instead of having that. Very good. Um, I have another question here for you. Is there a way to test pods for container escapes auto automatically? Um, yeah, so like a lot of the techniques that I've showed you, um, there's actually a, a GitHub repo that has a script that runs. Um, it's called BOTB. You just Google BOTB on GitHub, you'll, be, you'll find this um, thing by Brom Pony. Um, what it does is it's going to run all the well-known CVE for, uh, for container escapes. Uh, or try to access the metadata service or the cloud metadata service, or do a lot of stuff that I was trying to do today. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I don't have any more questions right now, Garwood. Uh, <clears throat> so I'd like to uh, thank our audience for joining us today. Uh, we hope you found the information that we shared today to today be of value, and we certainly invite you to come back again for one of our future events. Garwood, thank you again for a great presentation. And uh, hey, everyone, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, John. Thanks for everyone listening.